Hi, we are live. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Hi guys, my brothers and sisters. How are you today on this Thursday, May the 27th, in the year of our Lord, whoever, whichever Lord that is, 2021? Well, I'm outside and it's very, very lovely. Here's everyone joining. This is literally the first dry day we've had in probably about four weeks. I'm not saying it's warm, I'm wearing a jacket, but it'll do. Um, thank you about the beard. I think the beard is going to come off tomorrow morning. I've had enough of coming out the winter. Hi Ed from sunny Brooklyn. Hi Ali Dev or Aji Dev. Copenhagen. Ah, oh, this is good. Nice, all familiar brothers and sisters, friends. Hello from Peru. Yep, it does. Finishing school tomorrow, Lauren. How are you feeling about it? Wow. That's a big moment, right? That's a big moment. Hi, everybody. I see you scrolling down. I see all the, all our familiar faces or names. Singapore. Yeah, it's really nice to be out in nature. How am I feeling? I'm feeling really well, thank you. I'm feeling the best I've felt since last summer. I've, um, I don't know, and it's not just the weather, but I feel like I've turned a corner, which is good. Um, so, yeah, thank you for asking. Hi from Chile. Brentford prediction. Okay. <clears throat> Some of you who know football will know that I have two teams. I'm a long-time supporter of Man United and we won't mention last night but the team that Sal and I go to with, with season ticket holders are, have been are, have been for five years. Brentford have the chance to get into the Premier League. The first time in well, I think 19, since 1948. Big game on Saturday at Wembley and we are going. Um, wow. Okay, I don't know quite how to respond to that. Um, so how is, how is everybody? Did everybody see Tom and Johnny? Yeah, the smile, aka the smile with Tom Skinner. I thought that was fabulous. I watched it. Um, I didn't watch it live because it was my dad's 80th birthday. So he was celebrating to him. Um, but I watched it the next day and it was great, wasn't it? It was really, it was really lovely to see them play together. Man, those are crazy complex tunes and Tom's such a great drummer he's um he's a good friend and plays drums with a very very dear friend of mine who played on my record David Akumu Tom Skinner plays with David um uh and uh so there's this kind of synergy going on but it was great and it was there were things that I really like I love seeing Tom playing bass because it reminded me of the first time I ever saw him play I was in a play at school and uh, he was in the year below me. It was A Midsummer Night's Dream and I was acting in it and he was doing the music with this guy, uh, this keyboard player called Donald and Tom was playing bass and I always remember, I thought that was his first instrument. He's a really great bass player. So um, that was really cool. It's nice to see Johnny do his thing, just like, you know, play guitar throughout everything. I thought it was really great and it's, you know, I mean, I hadn't heard any of the music, so I was, I was as intrigued as you are. Um, yes, and I do play bass myself too. Um, so uh, it was good. I thought it was really good. Um, and I thought it was really brave. I think, you know, the first thing that you do live is kind of a TV performance or a, a film thing. Those things can be very unforgiving, but I thought it was great. And it was, you know, I think... Um, more will probably follow, but what do I know? What do I know? Um, so, uh, we need to see Ed perform some Shakespeare a la Kenneth Branagh. Actually, I was talking about Kenneth Branagh today with my dad. I, I've, I've very much enjoyed his... In the late 80s, there was a kind of... A, he was in the ascendancy with his wife and the brilliant actress Emma Thompson, and he did these Shakespeare adaptations, and they were fantastic. I loved them. Henry V... I remember being particularly stirred and uh, feeling it in a in a in a in a cinema, an empty cinema in central Manchester. 
Yes. Um, so, uh, can you sing any good, says Dawson Cashwell. Wow. I don't know. I mean, I had a singing lesson today. My singing lesson, my singing teacher is very lovely. She says I can sing. Uh, but it's a state of mind. So, um, I'm working on it. Uh, can you give us a quote? Um, what? Uh, okay, here's a quote. This is one from Much Ado About Nothing, Shakespeare quote. Um, this, is, this is from 1985. Okay, so this line goes, Beauty is a witch against whose charm faith melteth into blood. Take that of what you will. Um, also, um, much ado, yeah. Also, uh, what did I want to say? Oh, yeah. Do you any of you guys follow the happy pair? There are a couple of couple of Irish dudes, guys from. I never say dude. Why am I saying dude? I never say dude. I'm trying to get with a, a couple of Irish guys, twins, and they have they do this amazing food and stuff. They're vegans, and they've got this podcast, and. Um, they did a brilliant podcast with this doctor called Zach. I want to say fish, but I don't think it was Zach. Anyway, check out the Happy Pear podcast. And uh, they're really good. Um, yeah, I have their home cookbook as well. They're, they're, they're really great. Um, check them out. And there's a really good podcast with them. In fact, a lot of their podcasts are great. Very inspiring. Am I a vegan? No, I'm not vegan. I used to be a vegan. I was vegan for six years, but I came out here to Wales the first winter. And on New Year's Day, we walked to the top of the mountain. It was, it was like, it was below freezing. There's a wind chill of, I don't know. I never know what the wind chill is, but it was very cold. And uh, I got literally that phrase, chilled to the bone. I got chilled to the bone. I couldn't warm up when I got back and I collapsed the next day. And I got some... There's a guy in town here who's an acupuncturist and he came and I, I, I couldn't get out of bed. And we had, we had 20 people arriving for New Year. Oh, this is so, yeah, so it must have been two days before New Year. Anyway, 20, 20 people arriving for New Year and I couldn't, I couldn't walk. I was on my hands and knees. And so he gave me some emergency acupuncture that kind of alleviated it somewhat. And he said, he said, what do you eat? And I was sort of, you know, like vegans can be a little bit, I was, well, I'm not saying vegans are, but I was quite a self-righteous vegan. Not self-righteous, I'm not never self-righteous, but I was like, I was like, well, I'm a, I'm a vegan. And he looked at me, he said, when I came here 15 years ago, I was a vegan. And he said, you won't last a winter out here, it's too cold. And anyway, so I procrastinated for a long time. And about nine months later, um, uh, I found, you know, someone told me that the doctor that I went is a Buddhist doctor. She's from Tibet, funny enough. And she said that I should eat, because of my blood group, that I should eat some meat occasionally. And, and I said, but aren't you a, you're a Buddhist, you're not, you don't eat meat. And she said, well, Buddhist monks never refuse anything. They give them food. They, you know, there's that whole thing of, it's not begging, but they ask for food and whatever they give them, they eat. So, uh, I ate some chicken, I think, and I felt different. So I don't eat a lot of meat, but I eat it when I need it, and I don't really eat it in the summer. So there, you've got a very long story of I was why I'm not a vegan, but I mainly eat vegan and occasionally have meat because I kind of need it. I feel I need it. Anyway, that's, I was hoping we, yeah, anyway. Uh, someone says, is Radiohead releasing a new album soon? Two letters, no. Um, vegan cheese exists to the person asking hi everybody right okay I'm going to pull somebody in uh, um, <laughs> I yeah okay let's see who's there so that was a story do you like the stories favourite Smith's album okay alright favourite Smith's album I'm going to go with the last one Strange Ways Here We Come I love it I think it's I mean, I love them all. I've got, you know, Queen is Dead was a big, t big moment when I was doing my A-levels. Came out in 1986. Um, Meet is Murder, a company the first time, you know, falling in love for the first time. Um, but 
Strange Ways is c'est magnifique c'est magnifique favorite Bowie album ooh oh no we can't go there I, lo I love Station to Station you know everybody I love obviously Hunky Dory I love Aladdin Sane um, I love Let's Dance and that's um, that is quite contentious amongst Bowie aficionados um, so yeah a couple of things yes I have heard the new Black Midi sounds great and the moon was amazing 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 um last night i hope some of you managed to see it we had we've had cloudy nights for weeks and it cleared up last night so all right so let's do this let's see all let's see who's there all right okay i'm going to go with these guys because I know them well I've I I want to I want to I want to um, I want to connect with them because I know uh, they sent me they DM me so come in the frost the frost family the frost family are you there request hey, hey. how, how are, are you doing? Doing? I'm good thanks how are you there's Odin right here. Hey, Odin. How you doing, man? I've loved the videos said, that you So you today said. was the first day we went to uh, the candy shop. The first store we went into. Wow. Is this the first time Hi. out of lockdown? Hi. How are you? Doing well. How are you? I'm good, thanks. What, are your, what, what can I call you? Oh, I'm Deanda, but you can I, call me D. Okay, D. Oh, the, I, the lady. I, yes, I did. Wife. The good lady. 20, 20, years. 20 years. Almost 21 years. No way. Yeah. So, D, you look, you look about 29 anyway. So did you get married when you were like a, were you a child bride? Oh, God. Thank you. I just turned 41 this year. I actually no got married. No way. On my 21st birthday. Really? Oh, really? Wow. Oh, and a, Odin just told me, good job. Good job. You, know, good job? Stuff, yeah. you got all oh, hi Odin. How you doing, man? Good to see you. <laughs> I've loved the videos. Good I love job, Odin. That's I... his that's his I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> okay, it was so cool. lovely chatting with you. All right, yeah, D, so and, like I said, he what, uh What what do I that? call you, sir? I'm Tim. Hey Tim. Nice to finally meet because we've DM'd, haven't we? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So whereabouts um, are you? We are in Texas, like in kind of like the center of Texas, Tyler, Texas, or the East Texas. Is that, so is, would that be like, would that be near Waco? Um, we're actually two hours from Waco. We went to, that was one of the only places we went during all of quarantine is we went to Waco. Yeah. Um, we did a song with Tony Hawk, the pro skater. Oh, like wow, me and my son and my yeah. wife, and, and, and then he invited us to Waco uh, in December for like a special trip, and we got to surf with him, and it was like one of the most like relieving things after such a hard, hard year of not going anywhere, not doing anything, not seeing anybody. It was just like, well, it kind of felt normal for the two days we get to hang out. You know, it was cool. Amazing. Amazing. So you, you Texas born and bred? Yeah, yeah. So I was born here, like about in a town that was maybe an hour from here and then a crazy childhood um i grew up in like a satanic cult and then got out of that and became i was homeless for a little bit like from age 13 to like 16 and then wow. ended up in this town tyler which is where i met my wife i guess i was right before i turned 17 i met my wife and i just uh, survived an overdose um, and I quit doing drugs from that time on. And yeah, here I am like 20, almost 21 years later, married with an 18 year old son. And Tim, you look about, you look about 30 yourself. So you know. <laughs> well, I just shaved yesterday too. So, you know, it's like amazing. Well done. I mean, crikey. So you've, you've been through, you did, you, were you raised in a cult? Yeah. So from age, like from, from birth to around six years old, we were in a cult and there's a bunch of weird stuff always going on. My, yeah. my mom was um, a Satanist since she was probably 17 or 18. 
Wow. And then uh, like when, when she got out of the cult, like the, the cult members would try to like kidnap me and my brothers and stuff when we were kids to try to get my mom back into the cult. Even to the point, I think when it was right before Odin was born, uh, my mom got kidnapped, try, still trying to get back into the cult. Um, so I was like, you know, 18 years ago. But she, my mom finally went to prison. Um, and so she, I guess, you know, got away from all of that by doing that. But Man. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's just a weird, it's, and I end up writing a story about it. You know, like I, I end up writing this stuff down. There's uh, that, that's Odin's a, caregiver. Uh, hey, hi. hey, what's your name? I'm Evan. Hey, Evan, how you doing, Evan? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing really good. Is it hot hey, as hell? I re Sorry, what did you on. say? No, I just thought, is, oh, it, hot as, is it hot as hell? Is it hot as hell in Texas? Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's fucking cranked up, I'll tell you. <laughs> I, uh, I, I loved your song, um, the Reimagined, on oh, cool. John Lennon's new album. I loved it. Paul McCartney. Paul, Paul McCartney. McCartney, even. <laughs> <laughs> Paul yeah. McCartney. Well, you know, I, thank you. I mean, I didn't really do much. I mean, he, he wrote the <laughs> song and, you know, he's, um, he's an amazing guy. I like, I just, I, he's, he's a very, very, it's interesting. He's, a, he's, a, he's obviously one of the greatest um, musicians to walk this planet. And yeah. he's one of the most famous people ever to walk on this planet. But the thing that you come away with, and I think he's just such an amazing human being. You know, it's very easy for people like that to be egotistical, but he's a real, right. he just, oh, yeah. you, ju you just get the feeling he just wants to connect. And his energy, yeah. like, I had my daughter with me, Una, and she sat, and we were like, afterwards, she was, she and I were buzzing in the kitchen afterwards. She go, we talked to Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, See, it we'll was be, great. We'll be the same way after this. Like, we talked to Ed from Radiohead. Like, yeah. What the heck? Like, oh, <laughs> so, yeah, well. it'll, it'll be like one of our things, so. Wow. Oh, you know, I, have you... To, I have to share this with you. So when I met Tim, yeah. he was 17, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I was, I'm a few years older. I had grown up listening to mainstream music. And he was like, wait a minute, you don't know about like underground or indie? And I was like, no. And he goes, hold on. Showed me Karma Police. I, I cried in the car and he goes, oh, no, 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 hold on. <laughs> then he shows me Paranoid Android and I've never looked back since. Wow. One of the best songs I've ever heard in my life. You guys are just... Oh, thank you. <laughs> we love you. We've followed you for oh, so long. Thank you. Well, yeah, you know. I'll show you in Odin's, yeah. Odin's room. He has this, uh, this poster that he's had since, since it came out. This is like the, the radio promo or the... Yeah, oh, amnesia, I remember that. Yeah, Amnesia. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Was, he's had that in his room. That's so cool. Since he was baby. So, so and, they, you, and also, go ahead. Did you, did you, uh, did you force feed Odin with, with Radiohead? So actually, Radiohead was the first, Radiohead is the first concert he actually ever went to, but he was in utero. Like, my wife was pregnant. It was, I guess, during the, it was Hail right to the before, fifth. um, Hell to the Thief came out, yeah, in uh, Houston. We went, we drove down there. Trees. While she was pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember it well. It was really yeah, yeah. humid. Oh, my gosh. It was like, and then her being pregnant, too, it was just like, ugh. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, he's he's always been keen to music. Like, he his, he's rocked to rhythms all of his life. And now he has this iPad. Uh, it's like a chaos pad on his iPad. It's like a chaos Oh, nice. Music. But he, he makes so, like at first, like we, we kind of underestimated him, whatever. And like most people in his life have. And, you know, we even as parents, we failed with underestimating him sometimes. We're like, are you making these songs? Like they're, they're a little, it doesn't seem like stock music on the chaos pad. And so he was just went through and showed us like he put in a bass and he put in a synth line. And it was just like, amazing. holy crap. Like he's like, he's doing this. And so I have a studio here. Like I, I do like commercial work and me and my wife make music together. And so we finally realized it's a family band. Like Odin needs to be part of whatever we do. And so we'll uh, import his samples into my, into Logic and um, his coos and his awing and stuff. And then we turn it in, like I have an Odin synth that I just, it's all his vocals and he loves hearing it, you know? And so he, uh, it's just really fun to have a final product that's our family. Like, like I said, growing up, not having a proper family or whatever, yeah. now having one that we get to like, 
do something so beautiful and so sacred with like making music it's just like i i, I come in here crying listening to the stuff because oh, like, man, man this is something i've always dreamed of you know making music with each other and it's just so beautiful well, you're great i can tell tim that you and d are great parents and i think it's really oh, interesting. Thank you. i think it's really interesting what you say i think that i think a lot of us and you know you had obviously a very by the sounds of it an extreme childhood but you know a lot of people had you know we grew up in an era when a lot of there was a lot of trauma with children you know and and you know, mm. in Britain, it was children were to be seen and not heard. And, that, you know, and I think a lot of the, a lot, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of us, you know, I'm not saying my childhood was, I had very loving parents, but it was pretty grim at times. Um, yeah. At, like, you know, like it can be. And, but I think that's the thing that when you have your own family, you're like, okay, I want it to be the kind of childhood that I wish that I'd had. Don't you think? Exactly. You kind of, and and I, I actually, for me, it was quite important. I had friends because for me, I mean, you know, I came from a split family and that was that was the bit that was horrible and that, you know, the fighting and all of that, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's it's normal. You know, there's but it is still. And I think the. Um, uh, what's I going to say? I, I think. Oh, yeah. I had friends whose parents stayed together and I'd see them and I go into the household and the feeling was different. It was different. It was warm and it was. And it was just like, oh, okay, this is how it can be. And, and yeah. actually, it was much better after my parents split up because, you know, when two people don't get on, yep. they shouldn't be together. So, but, um, uh, yeah, I think it's really, I think it's great what you guys are doing. You're very inspiring. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, here's the other thing, because you look so flipping young, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you both look amazing. I can't believe you look like you look at 30 or 31. <laughs> we get them crow's feet in there. <laughs> the yeah, well, feet in yeah, wait till you're 53, mate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not too far behind. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I've got, you know, I've got, you know, I've got, sorry, you know, I've got a Texas connection, big Texas connection. Yeah, your gra you, you said it one time, your grandmother? Your grandmother? My grandmother was born in Nuevo Laredo. Oh, yes, Laredo. Yes. And then Very aged cool. eight, she could age date her that the parents moved her up this is in the 20s moved them up they moved to fort worth oh. And, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah yeah and i've still We're got very close to fort worth i've still got dear friends not different my family i mean their family i went to stay with them uh in in 19 in 1981 they they lived in san antonio and now they're oh, back yeah. up in the they're in the dfw area and i went when i yes. When I went round America on a greyhound, which some of you might know I once did. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, I stayed with them a lot in the summer of 87. And I love, you know, they're it, I've got, I, got, coming to Texas. Let me tell you, coming to Texas from England in 1981 was like, fuck it. It was like, Culture take, shock. oh, my <laughs> God. So, like, we didn't even have supermarkets in, in, in Britain where I came from. It was all, like, little stores. So you arrive in, and it was, like, it was like the movies. And I remember things like, I remember I got taken to high school for the day, right? And I went with a 16-year-old boy. He was driving his own car to <laughs> high school. He had and a on the wrong side of the street. Yeah. He had a Pontiac <laughs> Firebird Trans Am, if you remember those. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. And I <laughs> could not believe it, because one of the lessons was, we went bowling. We, everybody got into their cars and went bowling for a lesson. And I'm used, <laughs> to, I'm used to a classical British education, where, which is really dry and boring. And I went to an all-boys school. And the other thing... Um, oh. I remember, so I remember walking into this classroom and there are girls and they're like taller than me. They're beautiful. <laughs> and because I've got an English accent, they want to come oh. and sit on my knee. And I'm like, and they, was, they 100%. Were, I was just yep. like, I, and I was like, I was thinking, how can I come to school here? How can I tell my, I was like, I was trying to figure out, it's just like, ah, I like this. I like this a lot more. <laughs> how can I do this? How can I make this hang on just a little bit how, longer? How can oh, I make that's this? That's still true. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't even kissed a girl at this People age. I was still. 13. Yeah. So, um, it was amazing. It doesn't amazing. matter like what a British person says. We're just like, wow. 
it's, <laughs> well, it's a fun, it's a funny, th- and and I tell you what, I don't know if uh, I don't know if British girls use it in America if it works the same way, but I know that um, you know, being a British man, sometimes in America, it's definitely we've definitely played up the Britishness when it seemed oh, appropriate. Yeah. When one, when I was a single yeah. chap. <laughs> <laughs> Use what you got, use what you got. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, you go around the world and English people are not exotic in any way, but suddenly when you go to America, people were like, oh my God, we love your accent. And you go, and you start hamming <laughs> it up a bit more. And I, I have you got any tomato sauce? <laughs> tomato <laughs> sauce. Oh, my the dear. Tomato and the potato. Yeah, so. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, this guy. Sometimes when he's on the phone with older women, like he does window cleaning as well, uh, being a musician, like we got paid with yeah. bills, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. And he'll be on the phone and he'll go, Yes, well, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. That so, southern charm just comes out. And that and works the a treat. Love it. Oh, really? They well, it's love like it. a lot of. A lot- a lot of the the people who I wash windows for are older ladies, and they and they basically they just want somebody to talk to and listen. They I mean they like their windows clean as well, but they also like they they want company. And then so you know you just and I like it. I do I like hearing their stories. I yeah. I love I'm I'm a memory collector, and so like that's yep. I love hearing people's memories and and then like applying them to my life. And yeah. that's how I've always been. I love memories. I love old pictures and videos and just yeah. history. I, yeah. I agree. And I think, I think that's it's always, false. no, and no, and I'm the same with you. Like I, one of the things, you know, my grandmother died, uh, she died just before the pandemic, thank God, cause she was in a home. She was a hundred, oh. she was in 103. So she was, it was, you know, wow. she, um, but her and her, you know, and, and, and people in her home, you'd ask them about, um, about their lives, about their memories. And it's amazing. And I, I agree. It's, 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 um, everybody's got a story. Everybody's got, like you both have got, Tim, what you've just said is, sounds like a film. What you've just, it sounds like, <laughs> you know, in, in two minutes, everybody's got a story in them. And I think one of the really important things in life is to listen, is to ask and listen, mm. right? And you, you ask somebody and just listen. And yeah, that, yeah, everybody's got a story to tell. You know. We're super, super lucky. We live next to like one of them. Like, I, I think he's a legend. His name's Frank Chemico. He's mm. 80. He's 81 years old. And a, about a week ago, I went over to his house to help him. He had like a raccoon that got in and needed some help getting him out and all this. And, and he had this guitar that he showed me and it was a D'Angelico. Wow. And like, and it, the, the guy who made the guitar was his friend. Like he, it, it's a custom guitar. No, there's not one like it in the world. He goes, play it for me, Tim. Play. He's from New York. So he has like super strong New Can you play that? I can't play it anymore. Can you play it for me? He's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm playing him this guitar, you know, and then he starts telling me this story about him playing with like Stan Getz and Duke Ellington. Uh, wow. And the king of Thailand. And then he shows me the pictures. I got it all on video. I video everything. So I got, he's like showing me, it's like him, Duke Ellington, uh, Lady Bird Johnson, um, wow. Lyndon B. Johnson, all at the White House playing. Lou Marino from the Blues Brothers. It was a that's me right there playing the D'Angelico, the same guitar. No <laughs> way. Like, Holy crap. Like, and then I'm just taking it all in. I'm videoing it like so I can keep the stories and everything. Do and then what? like on his piano. Go ahead. Sorry, carry on. Sorry, Tim. Sorry. I so on, on his piano, like I, he wanted me to play some songs on the piano for him. So I'm start playing some songs on the piano, and I look on his. Uh, there's a picture, and it's uh, his nephew and his uh, aunt, uh, his nieces, with Michael Jackson in the '80s. I'm like, is that Michael Jackson? He goes, Oh yeah, he came by the store. He's a he's a fan of these model uh, these model replica war things or whatever. He came by to look at them, so they sent me that picture. That's Michael. I'm like, yeah, it's Michael. <laughs> Insane. But yeah, we get these beautiful stories from him all the time. And just wisdom. Like, he has so yeah. much, like, beauty and wisdom to give. And it just we just soak it in. We feel like it's a sacred moment anytime he yeah. takes time to share stories with us. And we know that it means a lot. So, And you film him as well, so you've got the stories. Of you course. Can... That's so great. You know, I, I, I think that was I – I had a really interesting um, – a taxi ride in New York about 20 years ago. And um, 
this guy tells me, and it's, he's not, well, he might have been bullshitting me, but he didn't seem like a bullshitter. <laughs> and uh, he's like, he's an old, he's a, no, he's probably in his late 50s, late 50s, which seemed old in those days. <laughs> seems quite normal now. Um, and he said, he, he was, he was, he was a, he was a, uh, a lecturer, a student, a lecturer at NYU. And for two days a week, he drove a cab because he loved the connection that he got with people. Anyway, mm. he, said to, he said this question to me. He said, if there's one thing that you would take with you, um, uh, what would it be? And I said, well, I don't know, my guitar or something. And he said, he said, there's one thing you could have. He said, he said, video camera. And he said, and you video mm. your family and you video. He said, because he said, in the generations to come, they'll be able to watch that, you know, and, and you'll be alive, you know, your great, great grandfather, there'll be, there'll be images of him. There'll be, you know, you, you know, your great, great grandson will be able to see images of you and you'll be alive. Whereas we've had all these very kind of, if we're lucky, we've got a few black and white sepia tinted photos of people looking very upright and together, very posed, <laughs> but we have no idea of the characters. And now we have a really strong idea of, so you, and so, um, I remember my father got one of the uh, got video camera about 25 years ago and was just videoing the old uh, my great uncle over in Ireland, getting all the stories of the, <laughs> the you know, the land and the farming communities mm. and stuff like that. I think it's an amazing thing. I think. And in fact, I've um, my mum gave me a bag of so she used to she used to shoot Super 8 in the in the late 60s. Oh, wow. yeah. So I'm I'm born in 68. And she, she filmed stuff all the way through up until when my parents split up in 77. And she found she's clearing out the house because she's moving house. And she gave me the bag of, of, uh, of Super 8. And there are about 40 reels. And about, I found somebody to convert it. And I sent them off three weeks ago. So hopefully, <gasps> you know, they'll be... And it's all, it'll be Whoa. weird. It'll be really weird because seeing your sister you all these places like move rather than wow. be there's no sound it's just yeah so I, i'm quite intrigued to see a, a, i'll probably be a blubbering wreck by the end oh <laughs> for sure yeah. for sure whoa oh. what a gift yeah. i know isn't it great yeah, i love that yeah so we've all like, got all this stuff on tiktok you know imagine tiktok for for <laughs> yeah. the great great grandchildren of tiktok users and seeing what they oh my gosh right <laughs> Yeah. Who knows where we'll be? And Who the knows? funny thing about all of that, like when uh, when quarantine started, you know, and we were just like we had no idea what was going to happen, and we had to like stay completely like shut out because Odin is very like he his high risk high risk. Is so that we weren't going anywhere? Is that because his immune system he's more susceptible? Is that kind of risky immune system? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so we didn't go like he obviously wasn't in school. We weren't going into stores. My she was like having to work from home. Wow. And I was washing windows and, and doing music. All my music stuff got shut down. All my window stuff got shut down. I yeah. Yeah, he, no, Heaven wasn't here. here. And, oh, and so, like, I started, I started yeah. filming with my phone. Just, like, I, I was so anxious. Hadn't been that anxious in years. And I tried to start filming, like, the beauty, like, in the midst of all of this, like, unknown and, and anxiety. And so I started filming, like, one minute a day. Like, at least one minute a day of joy and beautiful things to keep wow. me reminded of, of this. And so now I'm on like day 440, like we're still doing it, like even though like we're able to kind of go out and stuff, but I have a, like a whole year, a, instead of looking back on how scary and anxious I was, I can look back and every single day be like, oh yeah, that was, that was so fun. That part of the day was so fun. And so we you, have this cool like documentary of it and stuff, so. You yeah, are made a short film. Probably. Wow, you are really inspiring. I've always, <laughs> I, I've always wanted to, I, when we were making um, Hail to the Thief, I thought I'm going to take a photo every day of the year. And I, I, I didn't have a digital camera. I lost it about day 46. I was like, Bruh. Oh, you know, man. here's another London gray day, but you see it through. Of course. <laughs> wow. And it, and it's, it's, He's a doer. And yeah, it becomes, it, like it, it became like such a, like it retrained my brain over that, you know, after I just kept doing it over and over, retrained my brain to really truly find and seek the joy and like, oh yeah, like there, that is beautiful. And, and, when I film something, it's just, it's, if, if I feel something good, like it feels good to me, I film it. And then yeah. when I edit it, 
like at the end of the day, I edit all my films. Like, man, that was so fun. And and there was, there were so many days where I cried myself to sleep, but you know, just like, cause I was so anxious, but then looking back, I'm not thinking about those days. I'm not thinking about those moments. I'm thinking about the joy that we had and the, and the things that we conquered all throughout the year, you know? And so it's been really, really cool. Yeah. We have a former nanny coming in now. <laughs> oh, Odin's, nice. Odin's godparents are coming in. Yeah. Oh, cool. Nice. What what time is it with you guys? Is it? It's like two o'clock. Uh, two thirty. Two thirty. Yeah. 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 Hey, hi. Hi guys. Whoa. Oh, hi guys. Wow. Who's the little one? Who's the little one? This is Emma. Hey Emma. Wow. She's. How old is Emma? Six months. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Well done, guys. <laughs> Well done. It's such an honor to meet you. It's such an <laughs> honor to meet you too. With your, oh, your, is this your first child? Yes. yes. The, <laughs> the, the love bomb. Stuff. The love so, bomb. So cool, full circle story is I used yeah. to teach, I was a teacher. I used to yeah. teach Jason. Wow. And I used to teach Evan. Yeah. And <laughs> then Rachel became Odin's caregiver. And then wow. when Rachel left, Evan became the caregiver. <laughs> Amazing. You've got a great community there. Oh, it's mm. beautiful. So is it all opening we, up for you guys? We find our people and we keep them yeah. close. Is it, how is it? Is it all opening up a bit? Is everybody kind of getting vaccinated and opening up and, you know? Come on, man. This is Texas. Okay. <laughs> we <laughs> never closed. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. We got all our right. vaccine in March. Uh, yeah. And that was like when we finally started getting a little bit of normalcy. Yeah, but okay. So was it pretty? People yeah, didn't really, point. people didn't really shut down. People like I'm going to carry on regardless. Yeah, was that it was really? a really difficult time for us? Yeah, that's hard for you guys. Yeah. yeah, it felt it was something we had to work through like emotionally because it felt very personal. Yeah, like that you. I mean, that's just we we've worked through it, of course, but it it felt that way a lot of the times, like. You know, we felt like, well, do you not care about other people is kind of how it felt. But, you know, we worked through it and well a done. lot of friends that, that didn't mask and didn't take it serious. And we still love them, but it was a challenge. Well, know, well done. You know, well done, because I think navigating that with, you know, with people who've got different opinions and different perspectives and able to see that and not to not to become the classic kind of you're you're wrong i'm right kind of thing and the, that kind of that that i think it's it's interesting as well because there's so many, if i thought about one of the themes of the last 10 years it's about this the way that everything's become so binary you know everything is like oh. someone over there you have it and it's like i, I that's not my understanding of life i've never thought that things are black and white they're always nuanced and yeah. it's it's like standing somewhere in the middle being somewhere in the middle is actually in many ways it's the hardest place to be at the moment isn't it because it's because you get both sides that. both sides slagging you off <laughs> but then there are plenty yeah. of us in the middle and i think most people watching this, <laughs> you guys most of us are in the middle here and you yeah. find like you you go okay yeah, yeah. we get it so <laughs> and when you have like conversation and you know dialogue and quit yelling at each other trying to you know yeah. push your opinion or your point of view on someone else and you can just come together as humans and like yeah. you said earlier we're always just about hearing stories like you're probably a really good person and you know we probably have more in common than we have in differences so can you Sorry, can you hear the wrens? Yeah, they're beautiful. They sound amazing. I've been listening to your countryside beautiful goodness. <laughs> it's amazing because they started about the birds and the, the, the different birds take on at different times. So we've got loads of birds here. It's amazing. So I think this is the wrens now, although some twitcher might connect. But they, this might be the wren time. We had blackbirds earlier and robins and blue. It's, yeah, sorry, I've just... <laughs> so beautiful. No, don't no, we bird watch and listen all the time. We have a bunch of cardinals in our backyard. Oh wow. And blue jays. Cardinals, yeah. blue jays, and little finches. Yeah. Listen guys, 
so lovely to connect with you. Yeah, really, too, yeah. really, so lovely. you know, thank you. I, I, I saw you, I, I thank you for, you know, sending me clips of Odin rocking out in the car to, yeah. to you know, <laughs> of course, and, and all the time. That's what we do all the time. All the time. I love sending them. Love your energy and love love what you're doing and you're amazing mm -hmm. you're, you're amazing people and you're amazing parents and you know big love oh, to you, you and so to Odin and you know <laughs> stay well. Love right back. <laughs> yes. We We're gonna go hold the baby you. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go and, <laughs> go and squeeze the baby. All right, guys. See you, Tim. See you, Dean. Bye, love. Evan. See you, Evan. Bye. Big love. Bye. All right. Oh, that was lovely. That was lovely. It's the birds. Okay, well, that was really nice to connect with you. I'm going to try and bring um, a friend in next week who some of you will know. Um, hopefully. Um, thank you for coming. You know, it's, it's been nice to connect. It's been nice to connect. Um, anyway. I hope you're all well. I hope you hope you're getting through this and I hope you've been kind to yourselves and to one another. And yeah. All right. Big love. <laughs>